Hey everyone and welcome back. With this video I'm working on another prototype. Another supercharger, but this time it's the standard turbo housing style. In this video I'm also getting two birds with one stone and we're testing my more compact planetary style gearbox for the superchargers that I have designed that will also fit on the regenerative style. My new test setup here has a motor capable of doing about 20,000 RPM and my gear ratio on the gearbox is about 2.75 to 1. With the gearing on the belt that gives me a ballpark range of about 40,000 RPM max. During testing I was shooting for about 30,000 RPM and you'll see why I kind of had to stay under that number a little bit very quickly. After about 3 or 4 minutes of breaking it in. I noticed that the cheap bearings I'm using are not taking the high speed very well. Depending on which data sheet you look at, there's a ballpark range between 15 and 25,000 RPM for the bearings I'm currently using. And I bought cheap ones, so chances are they're less than 15,000 usable RPMs. But we'll see how long it holds up. For the flow test now, I get a little lower than we would have previously on the regenerative blowers. However, these usually blow a little bit more pressure and a little bit less air as a result of the design. This could be mediated with running it at higher speed, which I have limitations here. I could always change that with gearing down the road though. Set up to do the pressure test. Uh, my other gauge is in the garage with the 390 Honda, so I'm using the lesser of the two gauges I have. However, it should do the job. Well, there's definitely some sort of pressure spike here. If you notice, the belt's kind of flopping all over the place. So I think at about 30,000 RPM, the load increases, which signifies efficiency of the pump itself. That being said, with a better drive, I should be able to achieve higher RPMs. But for now, this is a good enough test case. It makes pressure. Here you can really see the belt I'm using flop around under load. Now that I have some measurements down, I'm moving on to the second test. 
which will be a torture test. I'm gonna run it for an hour or until it breaks, whichever comes first. I will also be uploading the full uncut test video of this if anybody wants to see it. After running for a few minutes, the gearbox starts to get warm but not hot. If heat becomes an issue, I would have to run some sort of closed loop cooler system, which is possible with the design I'm working with. I am starting to notice a vibration increase here, but it's not too bad yet. At about the 11 minute mark here, it starts to kind of pulse. The load seems to increase and decrease, and I don't know how much longer it's going to last. It hasn't seemed to get any hotter, so running just normal engine oil seems to be good. I could probably put a little bit more oil in it, I'll have to figure out how much oil should be in there. I should also probably put a vent as it warms up it might start pushing oil through the seals. So we're running at about 27,000 RPM and the bearings are really not happy. At about the 16 minute mark everything kind of smooths out and seems to run really nicely. At about 16 minutes and 37 seconds, something locked up. When I turn it by hand, you can tell it's really stiff, but something's slipping inside. So something seized up and then something else let go. So I'll have to pull it apart and see what it was. Because it's filled with engine oil and I'm in the house, I'm going to use this tray to make sure I don't spill any oil anywhere. And I'm going to take it apart and see what went wrong. As I pull it apart, the input drive seems to still be alright, which is a good sign. I don't see much, if any, wear on the teeth at all. Once I got mostly everything apart, I noticed a couple problems. The backing plate seemed to have loosened itself, and the nut clamping the final drive gear onto the shaft seemed to come loose. However, the bearings are shot. They were nowhere near that loose when I installed them. Overall, there's no actual catastrophic damage. The impeller had ended up rubbing on the housing and welded itself together, and then everything else let go from there. First off, for improvement, I should use better bearings, maybe heat stake nuts, and some Loctite to keep it all together under that kind of RPM and vibration. All the gears and everything seem to hold up pretty good, though. Well, that's about all I got for you. I'm not extremely keen on sharing the gearbox design I have. However, I will share the pump housing design as well as the impellers that I come up with during testing of the electric version. This electric version would probably do the job pretty good as well, but the motor I'm using doesn't really have enough power, and the bearings are awful. And the links for that will be down below. If you guys like this, click all the social media stuff, hit subscribe, you know the drill, and have yourselves a good one. Take it easy, guys.